Usap-usapan ngayon sa maraming mga private schools ang Senate Bill 2010 entitled An Act Prohibiting Education Institutions from Withholding the Official Records of Students by Reason of Non-Payment of Tuition and Other School Fees and for Other Purposes Introduced by Senator Joel Villanueva. Under this proposed law, it is considered unlawful practice for any educational institution in the country to withhold or otherwise cause directly or indirectly the delay in the release of the official records of students by reason of non-payment in part or in full of tuition and other school fees. Under the law or under the bill, students who have enrolled in any education institution who wish to obtain their academic records appropriate certifications or other pertinent documents for whatever purpose but are financially incapable to settle in part or in full their tuition and other school fees shall be allowed to obtain their academic records appropriate certifications or other pertinent documents upon the execution of a promissory note or other equivalent document in favor of the school covering the unpaid tuition Kapag hindi in honor ng uh, private school ang promissory note, merong penalties under the bill. Any officer or employee of the education institution responsible for releasing the official records of the students who violates any provisions of this act shall be pu punished with a fine of not less than 10,000 pesos but not more than 50,000 pesos at meron pang imprisonment of not less than one month but not more than six months or both at the discretion of the court and any education institution found to have violated provisions of this act shall be administratively punished with suspension or cancellation of its permit to operate by the department of education the technical education and skills development authority or the commission on higher education and shall be required to pay an administrative fine of not less than 50,000 pesos but not more than 100,000 pesos. For this bill to be enacted into law, I believe that it has to pass the test of constitutionality, particularly Article 14, Section 4 of the 1987 Constitution, which states that the state recognizes the complementary roles of public and private institutions in the educational system and shall exercise reasonable supervision and regulation of all educational institutions. Ipaniluanag po ng ating Korte Suprema sa maraming mga kaso, ano ang ibig sabihin ng reasonable supervision and regulation? In one case, Supreme Court said that when the Constitution gives the state supervisory power, it is understood that what it enjoys is a supportive power. That is the power of oversight. It includes the authority to check but not to interfere. Bito Onon versus Yap Fernandez. Also, in another case, the Supreme Court cited the framers of our Constitution no less in saying, when the Constitution speaks of state supervision and regulation of schools, it refers to the external governance of educational institutions. It does not in any way mean control. It refers only to the power of the state to provide regulations to see to it that these regulations are duly followed. It does not include the right to manage, dictate, overrule, and prohibit. Therefore, it does not include the right to dominate. End of quote. Another constitutional provision that it needs to hurdle is Article 3, Section 10 of the 1987 Constitution, which states that no law impairing the obligation of contracts shall be passed. When the students enroll in a private school, there is created an education contract. And as a contract, all parties have obligations as well as rights under the same. At sinabi ng Supreme Court, merong principle of reciprocity in school and student relationships which means that it gives rise to bilateral or reciprocal rights and obligations. Under Rihino case, GR number 156109. At dahil nga ang education enrollment or registration ng mga estudyante ay isang kontrata, it cannot be unilaterally withdrawn by only one party. There has to be 
a mutual agreement including the changes. At ang promissory note nga ay isang manifestation of that agreement of between the school and the student. Hindi pwedeng ipipilit lamang ng estudyante na tanggapin ng school ang promissory note. Pangalawa, bukod sa constitutional infirmities, the bill should also be able to show why it is overturning the current policy of the Department of Education as well as the Commission on Higher Education on this matter. In fact, para sa Department of Education, under DO 88 Series of 2010 as amended, otherwise known as the Manual of Regulations for Private Schools in Basic Education, it expressly provides under Section 127, a pupil or student enrolled in one school is entitled to transfer to another school, provided he has no unsettled obligations with the school he was enrolled in. And the school last attended by the student is authorized by the Department of Education to withhold credentials on account of unpaid financial obligations. Under Section 128 of the same manual, it provides that the release of the transfer credentials of any pupil or student may be withheld for reasons of suspension, expulsion, or non-payment of financial obligations or property responsibility of the pupil or student to the school. The credentials shall be released as soon as the obligation shall have been settled. My own take on this issue. The use of promissory note in schools had been in existence for many, many years, in fact, even decades since I can remember. Ipaubaya na po natin sa mga schools at mga magulang sa bawat eskwelahan kung paano nila pag-uusapan ang kanilang pagbabayad ng mga ilang magulang na hindi makapagbayad sa takdang panahon for justifiable reasons. Dahil alam naman ng school kung sino talaga ang umaabuso at sino ang totoo at sincere na nakikiusap. Kadalasan nga, patong-patong na ang mga promissory notes pinagbibigyan pa rin ng mga private schools. At dahil nga ang promissory note ay nakabase lamang sa pangako, maari po itong maabuso. Kaya dapat lamang nabigyan ng karapatan ang schools na mag-withhold ng transfer credentials hanggat hindi pa nagkakaroon ng malinaw na pakikipag-ayos o pagbabayad ng financial obligations ng isang estudyante. Hindi naman ito nangangalulugan na dapat ay bayaran ng buo. Ang kailangan lang ay magkasundo ang school at ang magulang kung paano ito babayaran. Ang pag-withhold ng transfer credentials ay extreme or last resort lamang naman. Madaming ang schools pinagbibigyan pa din kahit lilipat na or gagraduate na ang isang estudyante, tinmatanggap pa rin ng promissory note ang private schools. Ang pag-withhold ng credentials ay isa lamang deterrent or iwas sa pangaabuso ng iilan. Kaya naman, uh, dapat natin itong seryosohin. Meron kasi mga iilan na kahit kaya namang magbayad, eh hindi talaga nagbabayad dahil alam nilang makakalusot at wala namang konsekwensa sa kanila. Malambot po ang puso ng mga private schools, lalo na mga educators at mga school administrators. Madali po silang kausap. Hindi po sila credit card companies or financial institutions na kapag hindi ka nakabayad ay hihiyaing ka sa social media. Ikaw ay tatakutin. At ang uh, kahit ano pa ang dahilan mo, kapag hindi ka nakabayad, maaring ma-foreclose ang property mo or mag-garnish ang iyong deposito. At wala pong promissory note sa credit cards. In fact, meron pang ang kulong ayon sa batas kung may halong panloloko katulad, nag, katulad ng pagpapalit ng address or ng contact numbers at hindi ka nagbabayad at hindi mo pinapaalam sa credited company. The educator's heart is different from a banker's heart. Huwag niyo pong kalilimutan. Kung ang credit card companies nga ay protektado ng batas sa mga nang aabusong umuutang, Bakit kabaliktaran ang pagtingin sa mga private schools? Unfair din naman sa mga magulang na iginagapang ang pag-aaral ng kanilang mga anak at sila ay malaban ng patas. Dahil kaya unfair po ito sa kanila dahil sila ang mag-aambag-ambag para mapunuan ang iniwang obligasyon ng iilang magulang na irresponsable. Mahalaga ang tamang pagbabayad ng tuition and other school fees sa mga private schools dahil dito nila kinukuha ang pampasweldo ng kanilang mga staff lalong-lalo na ang ating mga teachers. Dito rin kinukuha ang lahat ng gastusin para sa school operations. Ika nga, tuition is the lifeblood of schools. 
Kung ito pong SB2010 ay magiging batas, maraming private schools ang mapipilitang magsara. Mahalaga ang role ng private schools dahil they participate in the delivery of education services to the youth at no cost to the government. In fact, the government saves money for building schools and hiring and training of teachers. Sana po ay pag-isipan itong mabuti, itong panukalang SB2010 at mapakinggan ang ating mga representatives from the private education sector. Ano pong palagay nyo? Welcome po lahat ng comments.